All right, what can you tell us about Detective Futures Inn? The Detective Futures Inn Batman uh, teams up with the Riddler to uh, deal with a criminal who wants to recreate the blackout that the Riddler did back in zero year. So uh, they team up, but Batman doesn't like him, and Batman kind of has something up his sleeve. And what's it like writing uh, something five years later? Again, this is like this is Batman, right? Like fans on their walls at home, they have every move he's made throughout right. the decade. Sure, sure. So anything that you write about now. You're gonna have to see some of this stuff through right. for sure. In well, the next you know five what? Years. Uh, I think that whenever you do future stuff, you're—I don't think you're locked into it. I think there's always back doors to get out of it. So I don't worry so much about like this is gonna be the Batman, you know, five years hence, right. you know, like oh my god, what am I gonna do? <laughs> you know, you just write the best story you can. So what I did was I took the annual, which is a prologue to Icarus, the storyline with Francis. And I created uh, the origin of a villain who pays off five years later. So with Icarus, it was a murder mystery. The murder of Elena sort of sets up the storyline, and we've got a big dose of Harvey Bullock because we wanted a very detective sort of storyline. Yeah. That pays off in 34, where you find out who killed Elena and why, but there are ramifications. Uh, if you've seen issue 33, at the end, Batman and Harvey get into a fist fight. And so on the last page, there's an explosion behind him. That explosion has ramifications that spins off into our second arc. Uh, but that second arc doesn't happen right away because uh, the labor that it takes Francis, the physical labor to do the comic book, is so much that uh, we need to build in more time. So we'll finish Icarus, then there's the five years later, right. then uh, there's a two-issue uh, self-contained story, and then we're ramping back up with Anarchy. Okay. And he will be our villain for the next arc. And uh, speaking of Francis, you actually didn't work with him on the Futures In book. You worked with a new collaborator for that particular book. Uh, yes, book. Uh, Scott Hepburn. Yeah. Uh, I've actually uh, worked with him before. We worked on uh, Rogue's Rebellion together. Uh, he's actually doing uh, some of the art uh, in the annual. So uh, he's a studio mate of Francis. That's how I met him. He's a fantastic artist uh, in his own right. And uh, you know, I, I couldn't be happier. And my last thing for you, when Bullock steps on the cape, yeah. like, that's the greatest dick move of all time in comics, dude. Well, so, I think that's all Francis. When he laid out the page, like I had no idea he was going to do that. Right. So I was just as like, oh, damn. Right. Yeah, and now all the villains are like, why don't we just step on that yeah. dude's cape? Yeah, but you know, part of me is like, I think Bat Batman let him get his shots in, yeah. and then he's like, you done now? Because I'm going to break your nose. Right, right. So, and he does break his nose. So in, in issue 34, he's got a bandage, totally Chinatown style. Well, there you have it. Another DCL access come and gone. But guess what, you guys? The fun doesn't have to end there. If you subscribe to DC All Access on YouTube, you'll know everything going on in the world of DC. And all the Vertigo stuff. That's DC, too. Oh, and sweet DC collectibles. Yep, that's still DC Blair. All right, Jeff Johns. Oh, it, Jim Lee. DC. Dan DC, DC. DC. Jim Chadwick. The entire world of DC. Aquaman. DC.